Hello, and welcome once again to Friendship Devotionals. I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. Let's start out with a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you again for this opportunity to come together and to dive into your word, Lord, and to learn about you. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to apply your word to our hearts and our lives. Help us to hear, and may your Holy Spirit change us more into the image of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to talk to you today about the goodness of God. God is good all the time. Good has many meanings, virtuous, right, commendable, kind, benevolent, true, honorable, the list is long. The Bible tells us in many, many places of God's goodness, and among the first of these is God saw all he had made, and it was very good. He spoke this when he had finished creating, and it's recorded in Genesis 1.31. In Luke 12.19, we find Jesus asking the question, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Psalm 35.8 challenges us to taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. We know very well that all things in this world are not good. Satan is the god of this world, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4, to where we're told by Paul, But if our gospel is hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost, in whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. It is Satan, the adversary, the accuser, who influences people to make bad choices and decisions. He has a lot of helpers, because Satan is not omnipresent. And it is the sinful nature passed down from Adam to everyone that causes us to listen and to obey. Man's heart, as described by Jeremiah in chapter 17, verse 9, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Rebellion and unbelief from mankind gave Satan the control of this world, and the resulting sin corrupted all the very good God had made. How did Satan get control? God said in Genesis 1.26, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, spirit, soul, and body, having the ability to think, reason, choose, and having emotions, desires, etc. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. He repeated himself directly to Adam and Eve in verse 28. God made a very good universe and gave it to mankind. As God is superior to all creation, so man was to be superior over all that was in it and answered only to God. That was God's plan. But Adam gave that control over to Satan when he chose to believe Satan over God. Paul explains it in Romans 6, 16. Do you not know that you are slaves to the one you obey? Adam chose to obey Satan. And, as God had said, his spirit died, and his body began to die, and he became Satan's slave, passing it down through Adam's now corrupt bloodline, making us slaves to Satan and sin, and giving Satan dominion over the earth. One day... God will redeem the universe as he has redeemed our spirit and soul through Jesus Christ. God wanted mankind to choose him, to love him, to come into his family. Psalm 91 says he is our refuge, our fortress, our God, in whom we can trust completely if we ask him. Yes, we will suffer. Bad things happen in this world because of mankind's sin, but God is not the source of them. He is the one who says, and we all know, we know all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Notice, he didn't say he caused bad things to happen. He uses them to bring good to you if you love him and if you have answered his call. God can do anything, but he set up boundaries, rules, and laws when he created his universe, and he follows them until and unless one of two things take place. His children ask, or mankind is on the verge of destroying himself and creation as at the time of the flood and at the time of Sodom and Gomorrah and at the end of this age. 
And remember, we live in the age of grace given to us by Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So he seems to be giving mankind more leeway to repent of his sin. It is not his will that any should perish, but all would come to repentance, according to 2 Peter 3, 9. He is giving time for all who will come to him. If you haven't, I pray you will now. The next hour could be too late. None of us know the time we have left in this world. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness. All through your word, Lord, from Genesis through Revelation, we see the goodness of God. Your heart just wanted to give your creation goodness. But, Lord, man rebelled. And in our rebellious state, Lord, we turned from you. And we didn't allow you to give us good things. And we blamed you for the bad things. But, Lord, take this word that we've heard today, this word that shows us that you are still good, you are still kind, you are still benevolent, you are still our refuge and our fortress. And, Lord, help us to turn our heart to you and run to you when things are bad and let you cause these bad things to work for our good. Lord, whether that's a healing in our body, whether that's something that builds our character, whether it's something that matures us as one of your children, but, Lord, work all things to our good and help us to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And help us, Lord, to answer your call on our lives. I pray for any who hear us today, Lord, who do not know you as Lord and Savior, that they will take these words to heart. Your Holy Spirit would minister to them. They would fall on their knees before you, Lord, in repentance, lining up with you, Lord, changing their minds and realizing that you are God and you are very good and you sent your Son to die for them and that he is alive and he's speaking to you constantly right now and begging them to come. So, Lord, may someone today, as he or she listens, say yes to that call upon their life and let Jesus become their Savior and Lord. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.